Today we're comparing three tabletop tripods, Manfrotto, Joby, and PGY Tech. Let's find out if any of these are right for you. Hey guys, I'm Mike, nurse, photographer, and videographer, helping new people shooting videos and photos to be able to get the most out of their camera experience through tutorials, camera reviews or gear reviews, and camera demonstrations. So in this video, we're gonna go over the specs, features, as well as my personal experiences with these tripods. Let's go. The Manfrotto comes at 6.7 ounces or 190.5 grams, and it can hold up to 2.2 pounds or one kilo. The Joby weighs 7.2 ounces or 204 grams, and it can also support up to 2.2 pounds or one kilo. And of course, the heavy contender is a PGY Tech tripod, coming in at 11.8 ounces or 334 grams. And it can support up to 5.5 pounds or two and a half kilo. And here's a visual representation of what these tripods should ideally be carrying. Of course, one of the reasons why you buy one of these mini tripods is because it's portable, easy to pack away as if you were packing a water bottle or even hand carry. All these mini tripods, they have ball heads. And all that means is that it's literally a ball and there's a lock and unlock feature for you to be able to rotate and angle your camera just the way that you want it. Another feature that comes along with two of these three tripods is that they come with a phone mount. Although the Manfrotto doesn't come with a phone mount, you could always buy one from like the dollar store or somewhere on Amazon and just attach it on the top. No big deal. If you do wind up getting your own phone mount, do consider getting one that already has a hot shoe where you can stick a microphone on this. The Joby comes with one and the PGY Tech comes with one. It's a slim profile, you hardly even notice it, but it's convenient if you travel around with a microphone just to get that crisper audio. In addition, not only does the PGY Tech have a hot shoe on top for a microphone or whatever light device that you could have on top, but they also have a hot shoe on the side just in case you wanna mount another one. So you can have a light on top and a microphone on the bottom or vice versa, the sky's the limit. Another neat feature that your tripod can include is having a quick release system. And this is already built into the PGY Tech tripod. There's a lock and unlock switch here on the side and you can easily go ahead and just click, easy to go. But the Arca Swiss quick release plate that comes with this, oh, works like a charm. I just need to find it. For this film camera that I have here, I have a Peak Design Arca Swiss plate. Fits on there like a charm, easy on, easy off. Another feature of this PGY Tech mini tripod is that it also extends. All right, so the PGY Tech comes with a secret compartment. It has another hot shoe where we can use as our extension. So what we're gonna do is take our ball head from the top here with a switch and untightening screw here. And we'll move it here to the bottom where it locks. All you have to do is just tighten it down so it doesn't wiggle. Okay, once we have that tightened, I'm gonna press a button here on the side. Boom, got more reach. It'd be nice if we all had ultra wide lenses like a 16 millimeter on full frame or a 10 to 18 on APS-C. But if that's not the case, if you got 24 millimeter or a 16 millimeter for APS-C, this, this is the best that we can do. And this is pretty light setup. You've seen it here folks, vlogging with a film camera. Before I continue talking more about these tripods, I just wanna mention some honorable mention tripods that I've had before, but I winded up not keeping. I love the concept of the switch pod. It's slim profile, easy to pack away. You can even buy a ball head with it too. But for me to pay $100 for that switch pod, I felt like, yes, I was paying for the quality. Yes, it was metal. It was awesome. It worked. It was magnetic. Great, great engineering. Despite the quality of the product and how well that it functioned and how it fulfilled the promise of doing what it promised to do, I still felt like spending $100 for that wasn't worth it. This Joby tripod, although it cannot hold the same capacity as that switch pod, but I felt like this can do much of what I need a tripod to do for even half or less than half of the price of the switch pod. This, although it is $150, it does pack a punch with all the features and it definitely shows its worth. It may not be as sturdy or as neat looking as a switch pod, but I believe this was well worth it for me when I thought of buying it. Yeah, Joby makes good products, but one of the ones that I did not like was one of the Gorilla Pods. I know they make much stronger versions, but I bought this Best Buy version and probably within a month or less than a month. And I liked it, you know, it was flexible. You can put it on any kinds of surface, uneven. You can even hang it up on a tree, which is what I did for a group picture one day outdoors. Because those ball joints start to loosen up, I just, nope, I didn't want to put my $600,000, $1,500, $2,000 setup on that camera tripod no thanks and from that moment i thought you know what 
Maybe all the rest of these tripods with the ball joints are like that. So I just don't buy those products anymore. It was cool for a time, but um, no, I'm not paying anything more for that. But let me know, did you ever use the Gorilla Pod? What was your experience with it? Did it, maybe I just tried the wrong tripod? Let me know in the comments. The Sony Remote Tripod. I love that little guy. It's got all the buttons there, the zoom, the custom button, which I like especially, as well as the record button. It's simple. It also flipped out in a similar fashion like this to the PGY Tech Tripod. It was a nice compact profile. However, when it comes to bigger setups like an A7C, I mean, if you have like a full frame setup, especially with a cage or something, you can really feel the weight uh, really bringing you down. It was nice, it was convenient, but one of the main reasons why I bought that was because of the record button on the handle. It's not a big deal if I just press record on the camera and just let it do its thing. Although it's a handy feature to have the record button on the remote, I just use a remote. And I also wanted a tripod that can hold bigger setups and actually feel more comfortable. All right, so here I got some vlogging samples for you to look at using each of the tripods and the respective cameras that fit well on them. All right, now I have the iPhone flipped around on the backside and I have it on the ultra wide field of view. It's almost like 16 millimeters, 18 millimeters. You probably see this setup here in the frame. Probably catch a little bit more of the window light over here. All right, I am filming on my iPhone 11 Pro Max and I have it here set to the front facing camera so I can frame myself correctly. And I have a similar kind of experience with the Manfrotto tripod where this is a 24 millimeter equivalent and I have my arm fully extended so that I can get a wilder wider field of view. This is what it's like if I have my elbow bent in, it's easier to carry this setup, but again, it's a lot closer to my face. It would be something to consider if we were going to be outdoors. All right, I am filming on the Manfrotto tripod with a Sony RX100 Mark III point and shoot camera. I have my arm fully extended. It's about like three feet out. This would be considered 24 millimeters for a full frame camera. So I do have to keep my arm extended in order for me to get a wide, wider field of view. Of course, there's not that much to extend, but of course the proportion of my face is something that to consider when you have a walking kind of setup. So it's not as close as if it was a ultra wide, but this is still kind of wide enough. Okay, now I'm filming on my Sony a6400, which is an APS-C body or a crop sensor body. Filming on the Sigma 16 millimeter F1.4, which is a 24 millimeter equivalent, if you can serve for full frame. I have my arm pretty hyperextended here, and this is just a regular tripod mode for the PGY Tech. You can still get a similar field of view from the iPhone and from the Sony RX100, the point shoot camera. All right, now let's see if we can try to get a better field of view if we use the extension mode. All right, so at the moment, my elbow is currently tucked into my abdomen, but now if I hyperextend my arm over here, I can get a lot more field of view as if I was filming with the iPhone at the ultra wide setting. So, wow, does it really make a difference? Yes, it does. And my camera is so far away from me. This is probably adding like another extra foot or so right in front of me, but I don't think I can keep holding the camera this far out. <sighs> This is okay too. Probably wouldn't use this mode very often. At least with this camera, it's still kind of heavy. So who are these things for? Generally, I would recommend tabletop tripods as secondary tripods. If you're going out there shooting photos and videos out in nature or with family, I would get like a legit tripod. Like for me, this is my primary tripod. This is what I use for generally everything. I would only get one of these tripods before I get one of these tripods. Unless of course you're starting out with your phone, then this would probably be like your first tripod. Any of these will do. This one just so happens to come with a phone mount and it's everything that you need to get started. If you're shooting with a camera of this size, you wanna get a big tripod. I would recommend the Joby tripod and the Manfrotto tripod for smaller setups. This, especially if you were going to get a phone mount or if you have a smaller point and shoot camera, as well as this, you could also take this phone mount off and put your own point and shoot camera on it or an APS-C body, that's perfectly fine. If you're a beginner and you don't shoot that much, you're doing everything on your phone and you can't quite go ahead and commit to a DSLR or a mirrorless camera, these will be just fine for you. The PGY Tech tripod. Now this thing is amazing, although it is pricey, that is the downside of this, but it does pack a lot of features. And I would say that this is a very good secondary tripod. For the price of this, you can buy a pretty decent tripod and a mini tripod. So just something to think about. However, if you're someone who's experienced, you've taken a lot of photos and videos and you realize that this just doesn't cut it or you need yourself to have a little bit more flexibility, maybe you travel a lot and you don't wanna bring a heavy tripod or a bigger tripod, then this would also be a very good primary tripod. 
but you won't mind paying the premium because you already know what the kind of shots that you need to take and how to get them with even a small tool like this. You're gonna know how to book this thing for its value. I got a tripod review coming up and it'll be right here on the top right corner. And otherwise, I got other reviews down here below. Thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.